So we're going to start with uh, backlink in a general sense, and then we'll move specifically to backlink and Vitek. I'll start with that because it's relative, it's important, it's relatively clear. We start with this, we go to this, we go to this, and we finish. After that, we'll get back to our sum of discussion of reports. Okay, great. So for the first thing, I, the most important thing about backlink isn't the backlink software. Step number one is not backlink. Step number one is get your data file. So the purpose of backlink is to convert existing data. I think we can start. Let's start, John. Okay, I, I can you hear me? I already start. I am starting. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, uh, okay. Okay, great, great. So, so um, in or, the, the purpose of backlink is to convert existing data. So in order for backlink to work, you need to have some data first. If your data are in Excel or Access or somebody's giving you data, you're already done. You, you already have that first step. You have a data file. But if you have a machine like a Vitek or a Phoenix or a Microscan, or you have a lab information system like Polytech or Cerner or SunQuest, if you already have some repository, step number one is not backlink. Step number one is to get the data out of your system, to extract the data, to export the data from your system. So I'm going to go to uh, this PC in my upper left-hand corner. It says this PC. I simply want to open up my computer's files. And here you see my folder, the C drive. And here you see a folder called WhoNet. I'm simply entering the WhoNet documents folder. So I've gone to Windows, WhoNet, documents. And here I have a lot of folders, uh, a lot of files. The top half, you see all of these backlink tutorials. The bottom half, you see all the WhoNet tutorials. So let's see. I'm going to start with this one here called backlink. Uh, AST Vitek 2. Uh, in fact, I think these two are both the same document. Yeah, English and uh, yeah, we removed the word English. So I'm going to go to the first one, backlink AST Vitek 2. This document was originally prepared in Spain, I'm sorry, in Argentina, and it was in Spanish. And we, I did a quick translation into English. The formatting is not great, formatting is fine. But we do want to, that's why this one says the word English, because it did not start off life in English. So, so step number one is how do we get the data out of a Vitek? So the Vitek software. So what you see here on the screen is the Vitek software, the Vitek 2 software. Um, so any of you familiar with the Vitek, when you turn on your Vitek, this is what you see. You see six big icons. The one in the lower right-hand corner, I am going to zoom in, is called the toolbox. And you can see it has tools in it. So you would click on the toolbox, and you see a few options. On my screen, you see four options. Uh, you see that second option is highlighted. It's called export inactive isolates. That is the key menu option. One of the nice things about starting with Vitek is that it's the simplest of all possible exports. It's so easy to export the data, so it makes it a nice way to start. On top of that, it's also extremely common, which also makes it important. You click on your toolbox, you see the option called Export Inactive Isolates. Uh, one comment about that, I would say this option exists, activated on about 98% of the Vitek that I have seen. So not a problem. You can do this. Sometimes you do see the option called export inactive isolates, but it has been deactivated, disabled. It's disabled for one of two reasons. One is that it has not been installed by the vendor. And that's usually not a problem. Just call the vendor. And so far, the few times this has come up, they call the vendor. The vendor comes over in a day or two and they install the feature. So I have not yet seen an example where people have to pay for this feature extra. The vendor people said, yeah, I installed your system. I didn't think you needed it, so I didn't install it. So if you see this feature, but it's grayed out, one reason is that it's not installed. Call the vendor, and hopefully they'll just install it easily and quickly for free. That's one reason the menu option might not be highlighted, activated. The second reason is that maybe you're logged in as a technician, and you need to be logged in as an administrator. So sometimes you simply need to log out, 
as a normal lab person and log back in as a, as a lab supervisor or lab administrator. So but that's a rare situation. 98% of the time, the feature's there, the feature is activated for everybody. So when you click on that option called Export Inactive Isolates, whoops, that will bring you to this screen. Uh, let me just move that red. I don't know why the red is over there, but well, let me just leave that red. That doesn't help. Okay, so this is what the export screen looks like. In the lower left, in the left side of the screen, all you have to do is a few things. Click on the start date and the end date. So you can export from January 1st to January 31st, January 1st to December 31st. Just choose your time period. I was a little confused by the VITAC at EPHI because I tried to export the 2019 data and the number of isolates was zero. I said, how can it be zero? You've been entering data. And then they explained to me that, yes, we have data from 2019, but we are lying to the VITAC. The 2019 data, we are not calling samples from 2019. Why? Because their computer, their VITAC panels are expired, were expired. And the VITAC, the VITAC will refuse to use, I'm trying to move my screen around a little bit. Well, um, okay, that's not working. Uh, I have my GoToMeeting control. So in the lower right-hand portion of the screen, you see the date. And today's date is 2020. But on the Vitec and EPHI, I noticed the date was a different date because they were tricking the system. They had panels, I don't know, from 2018. So they had manually changed the date on the computer to 2014, maybe, in order to trick the system. And so then the panels would work. So when I tried to export the data from 2014 to present, it worked fine. So it's just a funny thing that they had changed the dates. So that's a funny thing about that, that system. Okay, hopefully they're back to normal panels now and hopefully they could put the correct dates. So step number one, just choose the start date and the end date. Uh, keep in mind, this is not the sample date, it's actually the test date. And the test date is, an autom is automatically generated by the date on the computer. So if you test it on 2019, it'll say 2019. That's step one. Step two is you have the choice of doing MICs, interpretations, or both. For who knows, we only use the measurements. So you only need to put you only need to put the MIC values. The interpretations, it's up to you if you want those. So that's step number one, put start date, end date, put MIC. And in the upper right hand corner, there is an icon that has an arrow. That is the export icon. Let me make that a little bit bigger. In fact, it also has a CD there. The idea there is that this is to export the data and optionally to save it on a CD. We don't need to save it on a CD. we we'll just put it on a memory stick, but this is the correct button. So it says up here, upper right-hand corner, export. And if you float, if you just leave the mouse there, the word export will come up. And then once you select the start date, end date, you do have the abilities to select the organisms, but do not do that. If you select some organisms like E. coli, Klebsiella pseudomonas, it will export those three organisms. It will only export the ones that you select. If you select no organisms, it will export the entire thing. And that's usually what you want. As long as you're exporting data, you may as well export everything. So don't do anything with the organism box. So we will export everything. And then, uh, and then at the top, you click on that export button. When you click on the export button, you get the next screen. Found 11 isolates, continue with the export. So it has not exported the data yet. It has found the data to export. Um, and you can see if it matches your exp expectations. If it finds zero isolates, something's wrong. If it finds 20 isolates and you're expecting 200, which is what happened in, at EPHI, uh, then you want to think about why is this not working correctly. So continue with export. Yes, I do. So I click on yes. And then, of course, you have to give it a name. You can call it January 2020, call it, you know, whatever you want. Um, you can put it onto a memory stick, and that's what I recommend usually. It's convenient. Stick in a USB memory stick, and then the data will go directly to the memory stick. Uh, you have two other options. You can save it onto the hard drive. You can put it onto the desktop. You can make a folder for the, by default, Vitec wants to put them into this folder called lab files. You can put them there, you can put them on the desktop, you can put them anywhere you want, uh, or you can put them onto a, a CD, you know, 
the R Vitex or the USB has been disabled. Uh, why would they disable the USB? Because the company does not want viruses. They don't want people putting anything they want, the Vitex and games. And so on a very small number of Vitex, the USB option has been disabled for purposes of Vitex protection. So if for some reason you cannot use the USB, um, um, then, uh, then uh, you can just save it to a, a CD. And these instructions also provide instructions on how to do that, but most people do not need to save, save the data to, a, to, a, to a, a CD. Okay, so you can save the data to the hard drive, as I mentioned. You can save the data to the to the network to the to the um, hard drive to the to the desktop. That's fine; it's there on the desktop. But usually, you don't have Hunet on the Vitek machine. Vitek is a Windows computer. Technically, yes, you could install Hunet onto the Vitek machine. But I don't recommend that, or more specifically, the company doesn't recommend it. As I said, the company does not want viruses and incompatible softwares. They don't want to run out of space. So even though you might be able to put Hunet onto the Vitek machine, in the United States, it's forbidden. You would void your contract because they're trying to they don't they have to provide technical support all over the country for good reasons. They don't want to provide technical support to labs that have put viruses onto the machine. That's not a good use of the company time. So that's against our policy and our contract. But even in your case, it's really not a good idea to be installing new softwares onto these machines. Therefore, most people simply put the data onto a memory stick. And then they click on this last option called export inactive isolates. Uh, one comment about export inactive isolates, Vitek distinguishes between an active isolate and an inactive isolate. Um, it's exporting only the inactive ones. So make sure, like I was in a laboratory in Belarus at the National Center and we exported the active data and it only exported like 10 isolates. And I asked them a few questions and they said, oh yeah, we don't finalize our isolates. We just leave them pending forever. Um, uh, that's the only place I saw that really. Usually a hospital will always finalize. You know, if I take you have these green and the red circles, green is finalized. And um, after a certain time, they automatically get archived. Um, so export inactive isolates. If you're not seeing the data that you're expecting, it might because you have not finalized your results. That was not the case at EPHI. I think everything was finalized in the normal way. So it's not exporting all isolates, it's exporting the, the archived inactive isolates. And then at the bottom, you see a progress meter and export finished 100%. It does take a little while to get started. It might take 10 seconds, 20 seconds for it to get started. Once it's started, it usually finishes in a matter of a few seconds, like maybe five more seconds. Obviously, it depends on the data quantity. But okay, so it, when you click on export, it does take a little while for the export to get started. And then the following instructions here tell you how to save the data to a, a, a to how to save the data on a CD but I'm not going to cover that because at EPHI, we were able to do the USB approach. So are there any questions on how to export the data out of a Vitek? In short, start the Vitek and log in. Click on Toolbox, Export Inactive Isolates. Put a start date, end date, MIC. Don't choose the organisms because then you'll only get those organisms. And then finally, click on Export. Give it a file name, usually on the memory stick, and yes. And then you will have all of the Vitek data that you've selected on your memory stick. You take that memory stick from the Vitek computer and you walk over to another computer where Hunet and Backlink are installed. Are there any questions on that? OK, maybe question. John, maybe I have one question regarding exporting this data. Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, uh, Vitek uh, will export only text data, right? Text, yes. Yeah, maybe, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe this Vitek can give us Excel data, Excel type. Nope, it cannot. It cannot, okay. One of the nice things about the Vitek export is that it is completely easy and non-configurable <laughs> that makes it easy limitation is that you can't change it it is what it is 
any Vitech in the world, you go to the Vitech and you're going to get a file. I will now show you what the file looks like. I will show you two versions. This is a file that I received from Ethiopia. And here you see all the Vitek data. Okay, I see the heading at the top. I see the first column is called lab ID, isolate number, patient name, patient ID, patient location. And then here I see the results. It's the specimen number is 50042, pus, isolate number one, um, patient name, ID, location are all missing. Uh, followed by the specimen date is 2014. So again, it's that thing, it's, the, it's not really 2014, but we had to trick the system so it could use the expired panels. The organism is Streptococcus mitis, abbreviated in a non-standard way, STR for strep, mitis. SMT is the code, followed by this number here. This number is called the bio number, or the bio type, I forget which it is, the, the bio number. It's like an API. So uh, there are 20, there, for Vitek, there are 16 biochemicals. And, and you incubate it in the Vitek overnight. If none of the biochemicals change color, then this biotype is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. If some are positive and some are negative, um, I'm sorry, there are 48. There are 48 biochemicals. 48 divided by 3 is 16. So this 16-digit number is a summary of the 48 biochemicals. So knowing what this biochemical number is tells you what the species is. So generally, there's really absolutely no reason for you to know this long number uh, because it's what Vitek uses to tell you the species. You just need to know the species. Having said that, I personally like to see this number because there are many different numbers that would be E. coli, many different numbers that can be Klebsiella. So for my outbreak investigations, I do like to see the bio number because it provides greater discrimination Instead of just calling it E. coli, which E. coli is it? Low discrimination means that this is its best guess. Strip Midas is the Vitex best guess. And the Vitex has had trouble with these Streviridins things. So what you want to see is excellent identification. This is a Staph aureus, excellent identification, 98% certainty. That's called probability, 98. 89, we think this is an Enterococcus faecalis, which is a pretty good, but it's looking for at least 90%. So Vitek is saying, my best guess is Enterococcus faecalis. I'm pretty sure, I'm 89% sure. Um, so I'm telling you some details about the Vitek that are not extremely valuable for data analysis, but personally, I do like them um, because it does help us, uh, you know, I find in outbreak investigation, to look at the resistance phenotype, but also to look at the biochemical phenotype, which is what this number is telling me. Here you see zero, 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 zero. It says, you know, non-reactive, means that nothing, nothing grew, nothing, nothing happened. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at this file right now in, in a text file, but I can also open this in Excel. So let me close, let me close that and let me go to Excel. I'm going to do open, browse, C drive, Ethiopia, data. It now says all Excel files. I don't want to see all Excel files. I want to see all files, which is the first option at the top of the screen. And here's my Vitek data. I'm now importing these Vitek data into Excel. Is this a delimited file or fixed width? It's delimited. Delimited means separated. And here you see there is a separator. John, comma, Stelling, comma, E. coli, comma, urine. Everything is separated by a comma. So that is what we refer to by delimited. The data elements are separated. I say next. And my mouse has disappeared. I don't know why. So, but it's not a problem. It's just I will not. I, I usually use my mouse to show you where I am on the screen, but my mouse is not working right now. So I, instead, I am using my finger. Okay. So at the top, you can see uh, Excel wants to know: Is this a tab delimited file? John, tab Stelling, tab E. coli, tab urine. No, it's not. It's using the commas. So I'm putting comma here. I can get rid of tab, I don't have to. There aren't any tabs here, so it doesn't really matter whether or not I remove the checkbox for tab. 
I will say next. <clears throat> and it's asking, are these date fields or text fields? I'm just going to say general and let Excel figure it out. Excel sometimes corrupts data, especially dates. You know, it thinks it's a date or it's not a date, or it, it confuses month, day, day, month. Or um, you know, sometimes you have these MIC values, like in trimethyl from sulfa. Um, you'll have a you'll have um, a value like um, you know 119 one microgram of trimethoprim 19 micrograms of uh, sulfur methoxazole and Excel will get confused. Excel thinks that 119 is January 19th. So um, if I care about the import, I'll be very specific. That's text. That's a date. That's general. I'm just going to put general because I'm not going to use Excel to save the data. I'm only opening the data to show you the data in Excel. So because I'm only using data to view the data, I'm just gonna say here general, because I don't care if Excel accidentally corrupts the data because I'm not going to save the data. So I'm just leaving this on general. I click on finish. And here are my data in Excel. Let me just make this a little bit wider so it's easier to see. So here you can see, you saw how in Notepad, the data are kind of easy to understand, but it doesn't really line up very nicely. Whereas when I have this in Excel, it lines up in the nice normal way of rows and columns. So for example, if I turn on my filter, I can see my dates here go from 2014 and then jumps up to 2018, 2019. Hopefully we finished with the expired panels. I can see my organism name, my organism code, my bio number. And you can see Excel is a bit confused. It thinks that the bio number is a number, and it isn't. It's really text. So that e to the plus 13 is a little bit of a corruption. It thinks this is a, I think this number is 41 trillion. Uh, so this one, this column would have been better to treat as text. Uh, probability, uh, the organism. And then here on the right, normally I would see the antibiotic results. And as we saw in the email at EPHI, they mostly use the Vitec for identification, not for the antibiotic results. So that's why I'm seeing my identifications here, but I am not seeing the antibiotic results. So this is a data file from Ethiopia. I am happy to say there are no patient details here. We'll talk about this later, but please don't send me anything confidential. In the United States, we have a law called HIPAA. You're not supposed to be accepting things without a data sharing agreement especially with things like names, dates of birth. HUNET has had for a very long time a feature for encryption. About two weeks ago, one week ago, I forget when we released it, we made some new features in HUNET for encryption, and I can show you that. I'm going to take a little detour and show that to you now. I don't know if you have this version of HUNET yet, and it's not the subject of this call, but if I go to data entry, there used to be a feature called encrypt. We have now merged it. So it's now, we used to have one feature called encrypt, another feature called combine, export, or encrypt. We just put it all together. So here there's an option called encrypt. That's always been there. Encrypting has always been there, but now you can configure it. Because different people have different levels of desire. You know, maybe I do want this and I don't want that. Let's talk about this later. But in the version, the, the recent version of HUNET has an encryption feature that you cannot change. This newest version of HUNET has a, an encryption feature that's smarter, that gives you more control. For example, specimen date. Should I leave the date? Should I change the date? Should I shift the date? Like patient name. Yes, let's get rid of the patient name. But there are other things that are a little bit in a gray, in a gray zone. You know, um, should I put the month of birth or the year of birth or should I delete the birth? So this new encryption feature in HUNAC gives you more control over what should happen with each of these confidential fields. So that's a little bit of a detour about encryption. Let me go back to my Excel. So I was glad to see that there's no patient details here, but in the future, just don't send me anything unless we've discussed it first. In part, if you send me things, a lot of times I really don't have time to, I, somebody sends me something, I want to analyze it, but I also don't want to analyze things that, I, I, that we haven't agreed to. Okay. So uh, good. Okay, so this is what a Vitec file looks like without antibiotic results. John, uh, I have a question, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, how can we uh, change 
the active file into inactive files because we export as you show us inactive files so what does that mean active mean is that two days or one days so how can we get that recent data uh, to export by inactive form thank you the, the 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 i'm not an expert at that because the best person to answer that question is the vitech vendor and this is part of their job so you know i can see export somebody wrote in the email that you know uh, sometimes the vitech people usually the vitech the biomaria representatives are extremely helpful because they see this as a competitive advantage that they're offering a service that other companies cannot and a lot of times they want to have a good personal and professional relationship so in most cases the representatives are extremely helpful but sometimes they are not helpful they're not available or sometimes they simply do not know the answer to that for this question it's part of their normal job how does an active isolate become an inactive isolate uh i can give you an approximate answer i'm not exactly sure on the screen it comes up in red the inactive ice i'm sorry the that's right the incomplete ones come up in red and you actually I, i'm guessing you have to right click on it finalize or click on it and somewhere at the bottom of the screen it will say finalize the reason in belarus uh that they were not finalizing is they said we we, we don't have all the information that are that's needed to finalize it and we just got out of the practice of it um and they said we don't do clinical reporting we're just providing reference services and they had a relatively small volume of data at the national level so the vitec in the hospitals were fine so how do you how do you finalize an inactive isolate they're not certain you right click on it or search for the finalize button there is also something like automatically after 14 days or 30 days to move things to inactive so i have given you an approximate answer but the truth is i really don't know exactly <clears throat> When I'm there at the machine, I kind of vaguely remember because everything's on the screen. I don't usually go to those screens. I go to the export screen. I don't go to the data specimen processing screen. So it's, it's easy to do, but if it's not obvious on the screen, just ask your vendor because this is part of their job. How do you, how do you archive? Because I don't even think they get archived uh, if they are active. And of course, archiving is a core element of any machine to back up the data. Is there somebody on the phone now who knows the answer to this question? I don't hear anyone, so I think I guess the answer is to that's no. Okay. And it'll be clear on the screen; they'll be in red. So if you see a lot of things in red, then you're then you're they are not be they are, then they are not inactive. They're not archived. Okay. Uh, the Vitech is another software. Has a few other softwares. There's one called Myla. There's one called Observa. This is especially for epidemiology or for in interfaces. Like my hospital, we have the Vitech machine with the Vitech software. We have the hospital information system. In between, we have the Observer or Myla software that does the interface. So the advantage of the Observer is the Observer does export the inact Observer does export the active isolate. So if you have the Observer, but you don't, I know that because you don't have the interface. Um, for people with the Observer or Myla, Myla, I'm not sure, but for Observa, it, it does both the active and the inactive isolates. So this, this would be a proper answer for somebody else, but for you, you don't have the Observer, so it's not relevant. My, Myla, I'm not sure whether the, inact, whether the active isolates are there or not. So I've shown you what a Vitec file looks like. And as you can see, this is the kind of data that Hunet wants but not in a way that HUNET understands. For example, in HUNET, we don't call it a collection date, we call it specimen date. We don't call it specimen type, we call it specimen. We don't call it patient ID, we call it identification number. So you see, everything here is what HUNET would like, but the names of the columns aren't the same. In addition, the organisms, you know, they call it SMT, that's not the HUNET code, that's their code. In fact, some of them by coincidence are the same. Like E. coli is ECO. That one, Hunet and Vitek use the same code. You know, but these other ones, you know, I don't, you know, I, you know these other codes like Hunet and Ercoccus faecalis and Hunet is EFA. And for them, it's SFL. So these organism codes mean nothing to Hunet. They mean a lot to Vitek, but not to Hunet. 
And also these organism names don't mean anything to Hunet or to Backlane, but they, they help us get us there. So we are going to, even though they have the organism names, they are not in the Hunet structure. So even though we have basically Hunet kind of information here, Backlink will not understand it, Hunet will not understand it, because the names of the columns are different and the names of the organisms and antibiotics are different. So that's the purpose of Backlink, is to take this Vitek file and to make a Hunet file out of it. So we're gonna change the names of the columns, change the names of the codes, so that's what we that's the whole purpose of backlink in short. We have microbiology data here that Hunet would like to understand, but we need to help it out. This is what a Vitek file looks like that has no antibiotics in it. I'm now going to close this file. File, close, save changes, no. I'm now going to open file open. So uh, by email, somebody asked me if I can show some real Vitek data with antibiotic results. And fortunately, when we distribute Hunet around the world, we give you a sample file. We give you one sample file for Excel, one sample file for Vitek. I'm gonna go look for it now. I'm in Excel, open, I click on Browse. I go to my Hunet data folder, and I see all files. So normally I have to change this from Excel, but I've already done that. So I see all files. Here is a file we will talk about later for importing Excel demo, Excel data, but that's not the subject right now. There's a file that all of you already have. If you go to your Hunet data folder, you will see a file called Vitek2 demo data. And it's a small data file with real data. I'm going to open this file in Notepad, but no, I'll open it in Excel. It will just be more interesting and easier to discuss. So I'm opening this up in Excel. Delimited, yes. Tab, no. Comma, yes. Next. I'm gonna go to that column called bio number. Bio number, bio, there it is. And you see how it says general. I don't wanna treat this one generally. I want, cause then Excel is gonna think it's a number. Cause it certainly looks like a number, but it's not intended to be read as a number. It's like an API number. It's, 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 it's really a text string. So I'm gonna say this is text and I'm gonna say finish. And now when I go to the bio number column, I'm trying to do this with my, oh, I can do this with the, uh, oops. Great, so now you can see this is handling it like a, like a real, like a, like a, like a text. It's not changing it to 10 to the 16th power or anything. You can see for a Staphylococcus, it has this many biochemicals times three. For a gram negative, it has more biochemicals, which is why the bio number is longer. And again, I'm, we're not gonna use it. I, I personally like it, but um, it's, not nor, it's not common that people take advantage of this additional typing information. Okay, here's an example where it thinks it's a number. Uh, uh, let, me, let me import it again. File, open, Vitek demo, import delimited comma and i'm going to say the first column the lab id is text and i'm going to say that the bio number is text and then it does not change the formatting it doesn't treat it like a number it just treats it like the the the, the a series of digits okay so now that you've already seen this and you can see every vitech 2 in the world the data look exactly the same that's one thing that makes it so easy. They're all the, exactly the same. Um, th there are differences in the dates. Is it month, day, year, year, month, day? That depends on the machine. But the organisms are the same. The antibiotics are the same. Uh, the specimens are different. The Vitek company gives you a list of organisms and antibiotics. They don't give you a list of specimens. That's locally defined. The column headings are identical. And let me just make the column headings a bit wider so they're easier to read. Okay, so you've already seen all of this on the left so far. The new thing here are the MIC columns. I see Cipro, I see Clindamycin. I'm going to go to the Trimethoprim Sulfa. Uh, okay, and here you see it's a little bit different. Trimethoprim Sulfa is a mixture of two drugs, um, uh, Trimethoprim and Sulfa. So when you see here it's the 20, what it is is it's one microgram of Trimethoprim and 19 micrograms of sulfamethoxazole. 
So at the top, you see this is two drugs, trimethoprim and sulfa. So the Vitec just adds those two numbers together to get a 20. That's what a Vitec does. Vitec. Microscan instead uh, says 119. So what Vitec calls 20, a Microscan calls 119. It just lists the two values separately. And what Hunet does is it just puts one, you know, because it just puts the value of the trimethoprim because it's just easier to deal with 1, 2, 4, 8. Dealing with 119 is difficult to put onto a graph, but 1248 is easy. And the 20 is just strange. Most people, you know, so these three numbers. So SXT is just a strange antibiotic because it's two drugs. So if you see a 20, a 119, or a 1, they basically mean the same thing. They're just formatted differently. That's a special example. Everything else is here is pretty normal. Greater than or equal to 4, 4, greater than or equal to 0.8. The oxycillin screen test is simply positive or negative. Um, one of the things that people think is that people think that the Vitec is an MIC machine. That's sort of true. But as you can see, the Vitec very rarely says that the MIC is equal to something. What the Vitec usually says is it's less than or greater than. Meaning it's not an MIC, it means it's greater than this or it's less than this. So here you see the, the MIC, I don't know what it is, but I do know that the MIC is greater than or equal to 16. Here are the MIC, I don't know what the MIC is, but I do know that it's less than or equal to one. So the MIC, so the Vitec, if you look at this, I would say about 90% of the time, Vitec doesn't tell you exactly what the MIC is. Vitec tells you it's greater than this or less than this. So here the Vitec is equal to four, equal to two, equal to two, but here it's just simply greater than or equal to 16. Another small formatting issue here. It says greater than or equal to eight. That's what Vitec says. Microscan, well, let me just do this in a slightly different way. Let me put this on a new thing here. So Vitec, so so let's so, let's just say that we are testing dilutions. Let's say we're testing a test tube that has one microgram per milliliter, uh, two, four, okay. So let's see that we have test tubes and the first test tube is one microgram per milliliter, second two, test tube two, third, micro, third test tube four. And if the bacteria has no growth, no growth, no growth, then what we say, is that the MIC is less than or equal to point uh, less than or equal to one? Okay. So this is just re re I'm just explaining the basic principles of the MIC test. <clears throat> if you are testing one and two and four micrograms per milliliter, and the bacteria is unable to grow, <clears throat> that means the MIC might be one because one inhibited growth, but it might be less than one. So MIC is less than or equal to one. That's isolate number one. Isolate number two, maybe there's no growth. Growth, growth. And then the MIC is equal to two because two is able to inhibit growth. And isolate number three, no growth. Uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Let's see, the bacteria grows, growth, bacteria grows, bacteria grows, meaning we were unable to inhibit the organism. So this is the MIC is greater than four. So the, the four did not inhibit growth. So the MIC is something greater than four. So, uh, the, so if you have a microscan, we call this greater than four. If you have HUNA, we call this MIC greater than four. If you have a phoenix, MIC greater than four. E test, MIC greater than four. Every normal person in the world, MIC is greater than four. Except for the Vitec. <laughs> Vitec says it's greater than or equal to eight, which kind of sort of means the same thing. So um, I, I really, I probably shouldn't have explained all this to you, but you know, I'd like to tell people stuff. 
Uh, if this is confusing to you, I'm happy to re-explain. It's also not so important. It's a little bit important because when you see MIC greater than or equal to eight, Backlink will automatically change that to greater than four because it means the same thing. We test one, two, four, eight, 16. So if the MIC is, if the bacteria grows in four, that means the MIC is not four. The MIC is greater than four. But the Vitesk says, you know, it's not four, but it's greater than or equal to eight. So all of these things here that you see mean exactly the same thing. So I guess the reason that I am explaining this is that some people tell me, John, Backlink has changed the MIC value because the Vitech calls it greater than or equal to eight. Oops, okay. Vitech calls it greater than or equal to eight, but Hunet doesn't. Backlink will automatically change that to greater than four. So they mean the same thing. So don't worry about it if Backlink is changing your MIC. It's not exactly changing it, it's just reformatting it. So the reason I explain this is just to explain why the we're just reformatting it just to promote collab promote standardization across all HUNET users. So an MIC of greater than eight means exactly the same as an MIC of greater than or equal to, eight. I don't know if I said that right. An MIC of greater than four means exactly the same thing as greater than or equal to eight because we don't test the, the, the dilutions in the middle. We only test one, two, four, eight, 16. So if it's not four, it's eight or higher. So it's a formatting difference. It's not an MIC change, it's a formatting change. So these are what Vitech data that look like that have antibiotic results. Um, all right, there are also small issues here. You see less than up to 0.12. Some other machines call it 0.125. You know, it's just round off error. Some systems even call it 0.13. They mean the same thing. It's just that it's rounding off differently. But with the Vitech, it will always be 0.12. I think with the microscan, it's 0.125. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Okay. So, so far we have talked a lot we have not talked about backlink yet. We've talked about the original data file. We covered how to export the data from the machine. I'm showing you what the data look like in Excel. You don't have to do this. I'm showing you what the data look like in Excel, but there's no requirement that you do this. You can go directly from Vitech to backlink. So why am I showing you the data in Excel? Showing you just to, you know, just to give you a sense of what backlink is doing, showing you what the Vitech data look like when a Vitech makes it, then we'll show you later what it looks like after Backlink is finished with it. That's one reason why I'm showing you what the data look like in Excel. Another reason is for, is for data checking. Sometimes people tell me, John, I'm analyzing my data, but there's no imipenem results. And they ask me, John, why, why am I not seeing my imipenem statistics? And there are three easy, there are four easy answers, <laughs> but I, I can't tell them. <laughs> So they say, John, I can't say the imipenem results. Why can't they see the imipenem results? One is they didn't test it. You know, maybe the national data manager is saying, I don't see any imipenem results from laboratory number six. Why can't I see the imipenem results? Reason possible number one, maybe they didn't test it. Just ask the lab, did you test it? Reason number two, they tested it, but it's not in the export. With Vitech, that would never happen. Vitech always exports everything. Um, so reason number one, they didn't test it. Reason number two, the system didn't export it. Reason number three, Backplane didn't import it. Maybe they didn't find it. Maybe Backplane did not recognize imipenem. Or reason number four, maybe Hunet's not looking for it. Um, so whenever people tell me something is missing, where are my January data? Where are my blood data? You know, for example, if the date formatting is wrong, you know, if Hunet thinks you have month, day, year data, but you don't have year month, maybe you don't have month, day, year, maybe you have day, month, year, maybe accidentally the month of December will disappear. And people say, John, what happened to my December data? So the first thing I will do well, is I'll ask him, well, do you have any data for December? And they'll say, well, let me check. And they'll say, yes, we do. But then what I will do is I'll go to Excel and I will open up the raw data file because the raw data file will tell me, are the data there? Are the, is the column there? Are the results there? Are the dates in the right format? So whenever you something's missing, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at this in Excel because if there's a problem with Backlink, a problem with Hunet, we want to fix those. But I don't want to focus on Backlink and Hunet if the data, the original data are incorrect. 
So that's why one of the reasons it's showing you, I want you to be comfortable importing Polytech data or Vitech data or Phoenix data into Excel, because this is gonna answer a lot of your questions. Why is something missing? Look at the original data. If they're missing from the original data, either they didn't do it, or they didn't type it in, or they didn't export it. So it helps you with debugging, trying to understand why certain data are missing or the dates are corrupt. Okay. I'm now finished with my discussion of the Vitech files and the Vitech export. Any questions? Uh, otherwise, I will move on to Backlink. Is it the same to extract data from Polytech, the one you told us all this process? No. <laughs> Because, you know, I, I showed you the, I, I'm going to go back to Word. I'm going to back to the Backlink Word document. So I showed you when you open the Backlink software, this is what the back, um, this is what the Vitech software looks like. There's a toolbox, you click on export, you click on Next active and active. For Polytech, the screens are different, the steps are different. Um, I, um, I never made this into a manual. With your assistance, it would be great if we could make this into a manual. I don't remember where I put this. Let me try this. Um, let's see. Let me go to um, and then we go to examples and machines and Polytech. And do I have any screen graph 2019 export data tags? Oh, let me open this up. Okay. So, uh, some of you are familiar with Polytech, and this is what the screen looks like. Record selection. So you see, the concept is the same. You see at the upper right-hand corner, start date, end date. Do you want to export list? Do you want to export the output file as Excel? Do you want to sort by this? Um, and you see at the bottom of the screen, it says uh, edit format, You user export, and export data. So you can see the concepts are the same as the Vitech, but the screens are different. Here it says edit format. Vitech doesn't let you do that. So one advantage of Polytech, well, one disadvantage is that it's it's more confusing and more work, uh, but also it's more configurable. So the Vit one disadvantage of the Vitech export is Vitech data. Unfortunately, the Vitech export does not include age and not does not include sex. So even if you type those data into the Vitech machine, the Vitech export does not include it, which is very unfortunate. They fix that with, so Observa always had it, Myla has it. So hopefully this will always be their standard in the future. But if you are entering age and gender into your Vitech machine in the age and gender column, unfortunately the Vitech export I showed you will not export it and there's nothing you can do about it. What some people do is they is they put the age and the gender into some other column that does get exported. They trick the Vitech system. They'll put like the they'll put the um, they'll put like the specimen type plus the gender. They'll, they'll put it somewhere. Um, so one one disadvantage of the Polytech export is that it's more steps. It has to be configured, but that's also an advantage because you do have control over what is and isn't exported. So here you put a start date and an end date. You, oh, I guess we did a better job. I guess I did a better job than I thought. So I, I won't go into this. Or maybe, maybe you know, this might actually just be for the company. I don't know. It shows you the export. And then here is what this is what Polytech exported data look like. I, I think I just got this from the company because these are not Ethiopian names. Um, OK. So in answer to your question, no, the export from every system is different. You go to the software and you use the interfaces on those softwares. So the principle is the same. Go to the screen, put a start date, end date, maybe configure it. On the system, the two systems I've shown you, this is on what we call the front end. The user can do it. Other systems, there is no front end for data export. So for those people, you go to the back end and you ask the IT people to export the data. So I'm going to close this Polytech instruction manual. Uh, I'm going to go to Polytech export microbiology data. Let me open that up. So this is the, uh, I don't, right, these are also not real data. This is just practice. So you can see the Polytech, let me make this bigger. The Polytech sample ID, patient ID, patient name, species, glucose, thyroid stimulating hormone, potassium, carbon dioxide, organism, Um, 
beta hemolysis. So on my first trip to EPHI, we figured out very quickly how to export the data, but we could not figure out how to export the antibiotic results. So that took the second visit. I had to come back to Boston, discuss it with the company. They gave me the software. I do have a copy of Polytech on my machine. The, 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 my license is expired. So eventually I will show you how to do this with Polytech, but I need the company to, um, you know, to reactivate, reactivate my thing here. So in answer to your question, uh, again, every machine is different. How do you export data from a system I know? How do you export the data from Vitech? I can tell you. Polytech, I can tell you, except I always forget the details. How do you export data from Phoenix? I can tell you. How do you export data from laboratory system from hospital number four? I have no idea. I don't know that system. I don't know those people. I don't know the IT people. So instead, you need to work with those IT people to learn how to export the data. And for that purpose, I'm going back to Hunet documents. We have backlink number three, backlink and lab information systems, where we give guidance to the IT people on how to export the data. I'll just leave it at that, and we can discuss that on a future call if needed. We don't need to do that for Vitech. We don't need to do that for Polytech because we can just focus on those systems specifically. But if you have Excel or if you have a lab information system, we can have that discussion as the need arises. Uh, also, just a general comment. Whenever I teach Hunet and Backlink, I want to be very careful when I teach Backlink for a few reasons. One is most people don't need it. If I go to a hospital, I teach pharmacy, microbiology, infection control, infectious disease, IT, lab staff. I teach everybody Hunet because all of these people can benefit from analysis. I usually only teach one or two people backlink, maybe the IT person or the person in the laboratory responsible for data management. So one reason I don't teach backlink to everybody is most people don't need it. The other reason I don't teach backlink to everybody is a lot of people get confused by it, which is reasonable. If you've worked with a lot of Excel data or access data or data in general, backlink is straightforward. I don't wanna say backlink is difficult, but the concepts are new to a lot of people. So for a lot of people, they do get confused by backlink because it's the first time they've done something like this. Um, so the uh, uh, same way for you. And the, another reason I don't teach backlink to a large groups is that even if everybody needs backlink, this person needs backlink for Vitech, this needs backlink for Polytech, this person needs backlink for Excel. So instead of teaching everybody everything, I just teach them this, the, the points that are relevant for them. Um, so yes, you can see here, here Polytech can export anything. I figured out quickly, or maybe it was there predefined, I don't remember. We figured out quickly how to export the organism results, but it took a long time to figure out how to export the antibiotic results, and I needed the assistance from the company to do that. And then I, during my last visit last February, a year ago, uh, I did do the DPHI, so it is there. So the configuration of Polytech I did already. It's nice that you can see how I did it, because then you could optimize it. You could add more things. You could make it your own. Um, but the configuration step, first draft, uh, has already been done. Other questions before Maybe we move questions. on to back? Yeah, uh, I have actually questions uh, regarding uh, Polytech. Uh, yes. Actually, I have, I have tried to export uh, the Polytech data using Excel format. Yes. Uh, but the, the data what I see from Excel was, you know, one patient will have multiple rows of Excel. That means from the Excel sheet, one patient will take three or more than three rows. Yes. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry. And by different rows, do they have different antibiotics? Yeah, different. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Perfect. So, as it shows you, Polytech, when I went to the Polytech, there were like six different export options. So, one of the export options is the one with the antibiotic results. So what you're so this is I'm, I'm going to show you a screen. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit quickly, and then I'll come back to it in the normal speed. So if I go to backlink and new format and file structure and antibiotics, so here you can see I'm on the antibiotic screen, antibiotic configuration screen of backlink, and you see two you see a question here in the middle of the screen. The antibiotics of one isolate require one row, how many rows of data? The answers are one row or more than one row. So basically, both of these are about, both of these are reasonable answers, but it depends on the file. When you put the data into Excel, 
most and all of the examples I showed you so far, one row equals one isolate with many antibiotics. So for Excel, the answer to this question is one row. All the antibiotics are on one row. But you mentioned an example where it's not one row is one isolate. The example you just cited is one row equals one antibiotic. So in that case, you have more than one row for each isolate. So the WHONET way, all the antibiotics go horizontally in one row. But when you export data from different lab information systems, for Vitech, it's the same thing. For Vitech, one row is one isolate. But for Polytech and for Phoenix and for many others, it's just easier for them that one row equals one antibiotic. So you have pointed out, yes, the Polytech export is different. It has the same kind of information that Vitech has, the same kind of information that Hunet has, but it's organized differently. And one of the main differences in organization, it is not one row for one isolate, it is one row for one antibiotic. Does that answer your okay. question? Yeah, so can we uh, uh, change this data to Hunet? Yes, yes, you can, because, and that's why this question is so important. So backlink can handle it either way. Backlink can handle one row, one isolate, or backlink can handle one row, one antibiotic. And that's why this question appears here, so that you can take data from diverse, completely different systems and put it into the WHONET structure. The WHONET structure is one row, one isolate. So in your case, it's going to flip it. If, it, if you have 10 rows with 10 different antibiotics in Polytech, in Hunet, that is going to be one row, one row with 10 antibiotics going horizontally. Does that okay. answer the question? But this one is, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. you answered exactly. But uh, my fear is, uh, you know, sometimes uh, we will have ID issues, like patient ID issues. Uh, so in that case, I don't know, uh, uh, I don't know who it can consider consecutive rows of uh, uh, the data. No, no, I don't no, know. No, no. no, the answer is yes. The answer, the answer is who net backlink is no trouble with it. That's why we asked the question. So, it, it all, so when you have one row for each antibiotic, let me see if I can find. Uh, let me see if I can find a um, Polytech example. No, those are not data files. These are all old variables. Export. See, this one doesn't have antibiotic results. Let me go back. Let me go to a different. Um, I do have an example somewhere. Yeah, I often uh, delete real data, so I, there's a good chance I don't have the data anymore. No. Um, I'll show you a different. I'll show you a different example from a different system. No, which would be a good example? Of this. Yeah, Cerner. Let me see if I can find some Cerner data. Cerner Millennium. No, those are, these are not data. No PHI. Okay, well, it's not a real data. Let, let me. Uh, this is a part. This is a good example, but there's only one row. I'll, uh, so what you were describing is this situation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of, of a genomycin and a CTX and imipenem. Yeah, I'm just making up some data here. One for 16 of 16 greater than equal to greater than 16 and 0.5. Okay, so what you're describing, uh, this is R and that's R. Okay. So what you're describing, so the first, every example I've shown you, except for this one, every example has been one row with all of the antibiotics. But this one is different. There's one row, all right, previously one row is one isolate. Now we have one row equals one antibiotic. Yeah. So I'm gonna reformat this. Let, let me, I'm just gonna simplify this a bit. And, um, and let me put this, Let 
I'm just going to read the interpretation. Okay, so here you can see vertically six antibiotics. Here you see exactly the same data, but now it's in one row. These two data are exactly the same. They've simply been organized differently. So most of the examples I've showed you so far are like this. One row is one isolate. But Cerner, the example I have in front of you, as well as Polytech that you've seen, there's one row for each antibiotic. Backlink has no trouble with either. Backlink is perfectly happy with either. For the Excel example, we say one row, one isolate. But for the Polytech and Cerner, it's one row is one antibiotic. In other words, there's more than one row because they're multiple antibiotics. Similar question, are the antibiotics in a fixed sequence? So in this Excel, in this kind of example, the antibiotics are in a fixed sequence. It's ampicillin and then cipro and then gentamicin. In this vertical, there's no intrinsic sequence. I could put I could have put the cipro first. The order doesn't matter here. So that's where we have these two questions. When you have Excel data, the usual answers are one row in a fixed sequence. But for Polytech and for Cerner, it's more than one row and a variable sequence. So does that, and, and Backlink has no trouble with either. Backlink will understand it and spit it out in the correct two net structure. Does, does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. Right. So I jumped ahead. I'm going to repeat what I just said, but in the normal sequence of things. Okay. So I'm going to close my Excel and close this and then close that and close the other. Okay, I'm now ready to show backlink. Before I show backlink, any more questions? Yes, I have one question. Actually, our challenge uh, is how data is uh, communicated to physicians from the lab through either from one to Polytech as this kind of communication. So we have a very uh, difficult communication system. Actually, we have a challenge uh, to communicate physicians immediately from Hunet uh, through po Polytech because most of our laboratories use Politics. So what do you advise to facilitate communication between the lab and the physician? Okay, um, so one, first of all, and one of the things that Polytech is now working with you on is a web version of Polytech where clinicians can log in and get their results. So I strongly recommend the use of Polytech because that's what it's made for, partially, is for clinical reporting. So in two aspects. There's the new Polytech Web, and one of the goals of Polytech Web is to help this kind of national communications and reporting. The initial focus of that project is COVID, but the same platform can be used for anything. So that's the new Polytech Web feature. Um, there's also at at um, at Tiger Lion. I always get the name wrong. The Black Lion Hospital. Um, the the Black Lion Hospital. Um, uh, they have the Polytech interfaced with another software what's the name i care smart care smart care smart care okay smart. so yeah. phi so, so i'm sorry so polytech is interfaced with smart care so smart care is using smart care is making the results available to clinicians and they can use that for all of the laboratories except microbiology why because they're not putting the data into microbiology we designed HUNET as a data analysis system, an epidemiology system, a very simple system for clinical reporting using pieces of paper. And it's not adequate compared to smart care, compared to Polytech for web. Eventually we'll have a web version of HUNET. You know, it's on the back burner. We're getting back towards it. But in answer to your question, I would, for, if you have your data in already, if you have your microbiology data already in Polytech, then discuss it with Jeff Fisher and Craig, Craig, uh, you know, at the Polytech company, and ask them how can you do microbiology culture result reporting to clinicians using Polytech Web, and then he can give you, and then they can set it up, and then they can teach you how to do that, or at the Black Lion Hospital, try to get them to enter the results into Polytech, because even if it's more work for the lab, and I, I, Polytech is not, Polytech has problems with microbiology. Of course, I wish they would make it a better system. It's an old system, but if they can use it and they can optimize it because they're not using it in the best way for even its limitations, there are certain things they're doing that are not optimized, it's not the right antibiotics, they're doing too many steps. So if they could better utilize the Polytech system, if they start utilizing it, even if it's more work for them, 
it's going to be of hugely great value to all the doctors in the hospital who can get the results easily. So even if it's, I don't want to say the Polytech is going to make the lab work easier, but it's of so much great value to the clinicians. It also will make it easier for the lab because they won't have to answer the phone call all day. People won't be coming down to the lab, looking at the notebooks. So, so even if it's more work entering data into Polytech than writing it onto paper, it's still going to be a value to get the data into the system, not specifically for HONET, but because of clinical reporting, medical archives. If the doctor wants to know the patient's blood culture results from last week, then can walk down to the laboratory. If they want to know the blood culture results from a year ago, you can't look at the notebooks. You want a computer system. A lot of times you don't know if the patient had results in the past. So I've made this point many times. HUNET is not in, was not intended to report online to 100 doctors. Smart care was. And Polytech Web, I think, also is. So uh, does that answer? Because I, I, HUNET, we're a team of two, three people. We cannot make a comprehensive lab clinical information system for everybody in the world customized to their needs. And if something breaks down, we cannot be there 24-7. Uh, that's the purpose of these companies. You pay the company to do that for you. The smart care company, the polytech company, the hospital IT staff. Other questions about that? I have a question. Did the polytech company install the Polytech web for you yet for COVID reporting? Uh, in the Black Lines, they don't uh, so far start the testing COVID test. Mm -hmm. Usually it is the regional laboratories that are uh, started uh, COVID testing. So Black Lion is still the lab didn't start uh, COVID testing. That's fine, that wasn't exactly my question. Uh, has the company installed Polytech web for you at EPHI? Uh, maybe Diet knows if Diet can answer this question. I don't know who installed it. Diet? Uh, actually, uh, they installed the demo version of, uh, for COVID, but not uh, for the other purpose at the future. I'm sorry, the sound quality is not great. I didn't really capture that. Uh, also, I do see there are uh, 11 questions. Oh, no, that's. I check questions that just people never mind. Are there two questions? Okay, good. I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, okay, question. Has Polytech Web been installed? I don't think it is uh, installed. Uh, maybe we'll give you the answer, but I don't think it is installed. Right, because mm. because if Polytech Web is installed, the first focus is COVID. But, you know, they can set it up at some point for everything you do, I would imagine, for hepatitis and syphilis and lead and all the tests that EPHI does, I think that one objective of Polytech Web is to allow your authorized collaborators and clinicians to log into Polytech Web to see the results. So the Polytech Web should be very valuable to you at EPHI to get your results out to anybody that you give permission to. So, okay. Uh, so, okay. So for EPHI, okay. I would focus on Polytech Web, and for for Black Lion, I would focus on just getting the microbiology data into Polytech. Because if the data are not in Polytech, then it doesn't really matter about its interface capabilities. Because the smart care is already there; they're just not utilizing it for microbiology. Okay, we will do that. Okay. If no more questions, I will continue with Backlink. Great, let me close this. Everything else is closed. Okay, so here I have Backlink. And so Backlink is a language translator. You know, all of you, uh, uh, I imagine, are familiar. I'm just going to go to Google Translate. Um, and I'm going to say, hello, my name is John. And let me, other languages? Amaric, and then here you see, I don't know how the, good the translation is, especially with the word John. So you can see how Google Translate is very valuable for translating languages. Okay. Um, it's can doing two things. It's converting the grammar, the English grammar to Amaric grammar, and it's converting the vocabulary. It's changing the English words to Amaric words. 
Uh, Backlink does exactly the same thing. You can think of Backlink as a translator. So we're going to, we need to tell Backlink, we can't just tell Backlink, convert my data. You need to tell Backlink, well, what kind of data is it? Is it Polytech or Vitech or Excel? So we need to configure Backlink. So step number one of Backlink is configuration. How do we import the, uh, what language do you want Backlink uh, to read? Sorry, John, uh, yes? I, I have an answer for the IT personnel. They install four computers for the take for COVID. The RTPHI. So, so the Polytech web is installed for four computers. Is that what you said? No, just uh, a software oh. for reporting the COVID uh, results at the uh, EPHI compound only. They have uh -huh. at uh, uh, a beginning, uh, a kind of uh, starting initiative. Uh, to expand to the other lab. The IT personnel from the Polytech department uh, replay this. Uh, thank you. Great, thank you, thank you. Yes, so please continue the discussion with Polytech. Of course, the current focus is COVID, but this is a wonderful opportunity to get things set up. And the more you understand what they've done with COVID, the better you will be prepared to extend this to all of the laboratory areas, all of the priority laboratory areas. Okay, um, good, um, good, good. Okay, so Backlink, Backlink is very happy to tell to convert data for you, but Backlink needs to know two things. What language is it in? Is it in Vitech language or Polytech language or Excel language? And secondly, what do you want it to convert? The January data, the February data, the March data, Hospital 1 data, Hospital 2 data. So Backlink is, very, is ready, just like Google Translate is, to help us with data conversions, but it just needs some information. What do you want to convert, and what data structure does it have? So the data structure, that's where we will put in the configuration details. So we've already discussed that Hunet has configuration, antibiotics, locations, data fields. Backlink has configuration, and that's what we will see now. We only have to do configuration once. You know, once you tell Backlink I have a Polytech file and you have configured it for the month of January, you don't have to repeat those steps for February, March, and April. Once you configure your January import, the January and February and March data all have the same data structure. So the Backlink configuration only has to be done once. Whereas the conversion, you can do that once a week, once a month, once a year, whenever you have some new data that you want to convert. So how do I do backlink configuration? Uh, when you start this on your computer, you're gonna see an empty list. Here I see Agrosavia, that's from Colombia. A lot of these, are, these are, a lot of these are just demonstrations. This is other Algeria laboratory, Bahrain. These are Doha, these are all different countries. And most of these are just demonstrations or projects I'm involved with. When you start this, this list, this list is empty. So to get started, you will click on New Format. And just like Hunet, there are a series of questions. What is your country? My country is Ethiopia. The laboratory name, I will call this EPHI Vitech Demo. And laboratory code, I don't know, I'll call it EVD. So on this phone call, I won't do Polytech. Let's reserve Polytech for another call. But most of the steps are the same, but Vitech is easier because, you know, Vitech, we already know everything about the Vitech. So we've defined the country and the laboratory code, just like we do, you know, for Hunet. And then we have two questions. What is the structure of your data? And what are the codes and date formats? So let's start with file structure. Again, it's like a language. Every language has grammar and vocabulary, and a data file has a structure and codes. So the first question, file structure, describe the structure of your data file. I click on enter because my mouse is not working. And here at the top, you have a lot more questions. Uh, and question number one, do you, what kind of data do you have? Is it a delimited text file? Is it an access file? Is it a Phoenix Becton Dickinson epicenter file, which is what they have at ICL uh, in, in Addis? Is it Copernico, Microscan? We have a lot of machines here. All of these in this middle section are machines, including Vitec Observa, including Vitec 2. That's the one that I showed to you. Cerner, Millennium. We have from Norway. We have Croatia. Um, okay, And we don't have Polytech on this list. 
if we could finalize and optimize the Polytech export, I would simply put Polytech onto this list. Polytech is not on this list, not a problem. We're just going to call it delimited text. But if Polytech is on this list, it just saves a lot of steps because Hunet already knows a lot of the answers. So I want to import my Vitech data. So here you see Vitech 2 or Vitech Compact. It's the same, same software. Good. So, so in short, file structure, we need to tell backlink. And OK, I'm going to go back to the first one. Here you see it says file structure text delimited. I mean, it's just some simple file that backlink does not know anything about. Look at the middle of the screen. The antibiotic questions, guidelines, is that CLSI or UCAST? I don't know. Is it MIC or DISC? Is it one antibiotic, multiple antibiotics? So when I say text delimited, backlink does not know, backlink does not have all the answers. I'm now using my arrow key. Well, uh, yeah, I'm using my arrow key. Well, let me do it this way. As I go down, look at the ans antibiotic answers in the middle of the screen. Depending on the machine, this machine is a disk diffusion machine. This is an MIC machine, a disk machine. This machine does disk and MIC. This one only does MIC. This one does disk MIC and D-test. In fact, this isn't a machine. This is Cerner Millennium, which is a live information system. So you can see that if I call this a simple delimited text, Backlink doesn't have trouble with that, but it does not, it needs more information. I'm going to put this back to Vitech. And you can see it already knows all the answers. It is one row for each isolate. This is an MIC machine. The antibiotics are in a fixed sequence, and it's all MIC. There are no disk diffusion data. Any questions so far? So question number one for backlink is, what is your country? What is your lab? Question number two, is it a generic text file? Is it a Vitek file? Is it a Polytech file? So I say it's a Vitek file. And Backlink says, thank you. I have almost all the information I need to know. I'm going to click on antibiotics. Normally, there are a lot of questions on this screen, but I'm hiding those questions because Backlink already knows the answer. I'm not going to ask you a question if Backlink already knows the answer to the question. But I do have the ability to select between CLSI and UCAST. Um, there are a, a number of French countries still use CASFM, and most of these others have already disappeared. Okay. So CLSI and um, so in Ethiopia, you use CLSI, if I remember correctly. And if not, just use UCAST. You just okay. use the one that you're doing. Okay. Um, good. Yes, yes, I so I'm clicking on OK. So, um, and there are more questions down here. But Backlink already knows the answers, and I do not have to answer them. So I'm going to click on OK, and I'm going to click on Save, and I'm going to call this EVD, Exit, Exit. I did that quickly because I'm going to repeat this from scratch. So here you see, um, C drive, um, uh, let's see. Uh, let's see if I, I just want to clean up my folders here because I've got a lot of stuff that you don't need to, I don't want to be confusing. I'm going to take all these configuration files. You see they all ended in the letter CFG. Take all of my configurations and, um, well, just, oh, lab config. So I put them here. Okay, that's fine. I, I just cleaned up my folder. Okay, let me, uh, let me go here. Okay, I'm just, I'm, so I'm going to, everything I just did for the last 10 minutes of speaking, I'm going to repeat just to highlight how super simple it is to do this for a Vitek. So I'm just repeating everything I just did, but without really talking very much. New format, Ethiopia, EPHI Vitek demo, EVD, file structure. File structure, Vitek 2, OK, save. I'll give this a name. I can call this EPHI Vitek demo, or I can call this EVD, call it whatever you want, save, and I exit. So I'm just highlighting, even though I talked a lot, you saw how super easy and quick it is. I'm going to do it one more time. Delete format. 
So because Backlink understands Vitek extremely well, it's asking the minimum, minimum, minimum number of questions. So restarting from scratch, new lab, Ethiopia, EPHI Vitek demo, EVD, file structure. I call this a Vitek 2 file. I click OK. I click on Save. I give it a name. I don't care what name you give. I'll call this EPHI Vitek demo. It's up to you. And let me call this uh, Save. And you see at the top of the screen, everything that I just did has been saved into a file called EPHI Vitek demo. I click on Exit. And there it is. So to to, conf to import data from Vitek, you have to do configuration first. Configuring the Vitek import or the Phoenix import or the Cerner import, it's extremely simple because Backlink already knows all of the answers. Let me repeat that here, edit format. Oops, edit format. Wow, my mouse is giving me trouble. Let me just restart Backlink. Edit format, good, uh, and file structure. So you see these questions at the bottom of the screen are very important, but back then Gordy knew the answers. There's another section at the bottom that we did not look at, and it says to find the relationship between your data fields and the WhoNet data fields. We didn't do this because Backlink already knew the answers. I will show it to you, just to show you how smart Backlink is. Let me click on data fields. And you can see the first row, WhoNet calls it identification number, Vitek calls it patient ID. WhoNet calls it specimen number, Vitek calls it lab ID. WhoNet calls it specimen date, Vitek calls it collection date. WhoNet calls it organism, Vitek calls it all organism name. I'm going to exit out of that and exit out of that and exit out of that. Those are very important questions, but we didn't ask you, Bathing didn't ask you, because I asked the company, the company told me, and I told Backlink. So the reason the Vitek configuration was so easy is because we have pre-programmed in all of the correct responses. That's it for configuration. Any questions? To import Excel, it's more work. To import Polytech, it's more work because Backlink doesn't know the answer to those questions. We'll disclose those on another phone call. Um, but any questions about the Vitek import? And if no questions, I'll just continue. So that configuration, I did that for one month of data, for example. I don't have to repeat that in February, March, and April, because every month, the data structure is the same. The codes are the same. The column headings are the same. So configuration only has to be done once. Um, I'll just give you an example of what they did in, in, in the country Ireland. Ireland, they worked with 20 different labs, and the 20 different labs, some had Vitek and some had Excel and some had machines and some had different lab information systems. So the national data manager asked all the labs, please send me whatever data is easiest for you, and they did that. And then the national data manager did the backend configuration for everybody. So if I'm working with 20 labs with 20 different systems or with 10 different systems it was just easier in ireland he said let me do the backend configurations for all of you so he did not teach the 20 hospitals how to create new backend configurations he did teach them he did teach them how to convert data on a monthly basis so just to reemphasize the point is uh, if you are dealing with backlink with many different facilities you should. Uh, you don't have to teach them configuration. You could just do the configuration for them, and then you just share with them the configuration files. Okay, great. So that's configuration. Now I want to. Now I want to import some data. But what data do I want to import? So on the right side of the screen, I see two browse buttons. The browse button at the top is for the original data file that already exists. The browse button at the bottom is for the new data file that we want to create, okay? So the file, the browse, the button at the top, this file exists. So I'm gonna click on browse on the right-hand side of the screen. There it is, browse. And here you can see the Vitek demo. So sure, um, 
yeah, I'll just do that one because that's that's my data that all of you have because it comes as part of Hunet, it comes standard. Click on open. That new file exists. We looked at it in Notepad, we looked at it in Excel, and I want to make a new file. So at the bottom of the screen, we have a space for the name and location of the new data file. And it says asterisk, because asterisk is not a real name. I'm just going to call this test. So I have the real original data called vitech 2 demo I'm going to make a new file called test. And begin, begin, convert. And I'm going to say begin conversion. So just to reemphasize for you, this first file exists. This second file does not exist yet, but it will exist once we finish backlink. And this new file that we are about to create will have the same data, the same antibiotics, the same organisms, the same patients, but using the HUNET data structure. So that's the whole purpose of backlink, is to take the original data and to restructure it as a HUNET file. The name of the new net the, the name of the new hunet file is called test.evd let me click on begin conversion uh, um, we uh, this is this step is no longer necessary we fixed it yesterday uh, i'm not going to talk about it because we've already fixed this Good. okay okay and i'm going to restart that okay okay so now i click on begin conversion and it is going to show me the first three bacteria so I can do a visual inspection to make sure there's no obvious mistake. The left side of the screen says first name, last name, that's the names of the fields. The second column has the Vitec value. You know, this is the Vitec name, John Smith, location is ICU, specimen number is this, specimen date is 2014, um, you know, uh, June 2nd blood, Staphylococcus. So the middle column is what Backlink sees in the, in, the, in the Vitec file. The column on the right is the new things that are going to go into the HUNET file. Most of the columns, it just simply copies and pastes. So identification number is simply copied pasted. John Smith is split up into John and Smith. ICU is copied to, copy to ICU. The specimen number is copied. The bottom of the screen, I'm paying closer attention. Staph hemolyticus is what Vitec calls it. So we're going to copy that over to the HUNET file. But the HUNET code is SHL. So here you see two similar columns, the HUNET organism code and the local Vitec organism code. So we just copy over the Vitec code without change so we don't lose information. But we recode it with the HUNET code. So Staph hemolyticus becomes SHL. Backlink knows that because I already programmed in the full backlink, the full Vitec dictionary. Blood. It's smart enough to understand the word blood because blood is blood. The Vitec word is blood. The HUNET word is blood. So the HUNET code is BL. So you can see that Backlink is doing a nice, smart job of capturing the specimen, the organism, and then the antibiotic results at the bottom of the screen. Backlink is having a little bit of trouble here with the dates, the specimen date and the test date. The bio number is fine. It's simply copied over. The probability is copied over. On this entire screen, there is only two, there are only two problems, both of them with the dates. And the data file says it's June 2nd, 2014, but Hunet says, I don't know what that means. Same thing for the testing date, the date's wrong. So basically, I'm very happy this. Isolate number one, I am happy. Let me go to isolate number two. Isolate number two, Mary Jones, Five North, Blood, Staph Hominis, Antibiotic Results. I'm happy with this, except for the dates. What I'm looking for here are mistakes. For example, if the name of the person is sputum, there's some mistake. If the name of the if the name of the specimen is Staph aureus, there's a mistake. So the reason who back think is showing you these first three is to do a visual confirmation that the data are working correctly. And here I am happy. Everything is working perfectly, except for the two dates. It's isolate number one, isolate number two. This is isolate number three. Again, everything is perfect except for the dates. Any questions? 
So it's almost perfect, but I've got to do something about those dates. Uh, sorry, John. What about yeah. sex uh, and age? Well, uh, excellent question. So what, what you see here on the left side of the screen are the questions that Hunet would like to know. That list you can change. You can add questions. You can delete questions. So the list on the left is what we would like to capture. The second column here is the information it found in the Vitek file. So let's go back to the Vitek file. Let's go back to the Vitek file. Oh, and I guess I moved. Uh, um, uh, uh, Excel complained because back then cast this file open. So I'm just going to make a copy of this file. So if I check, uh, oh, I already have a copy. Good. Okay. Oops, I accidentally left Excel. Okay, let me go back to Excel. And delimited comma open. Okay. So these are the Vitek data that we are importing. Do you see age and sex in this file? No. No. And the reason is very unfortunate. The reason is that the Vitek export does not include it. And there's nothing you can do about that. Um, it's just a weakness of the system because they made this system years ago without thinking about people using this for epidemiology. And we've complained many times to the company. As I mentioned, Observa has no trouble. Mila has no trouble. But even if you enter age and gender into a Vitek, it will not be included in this export. So in answer to your question, it is missing from the data file. That's why we don't see it, because it was never there to begin with. No, and that's always true for Vitek. But there might be other examples. You might have a different data file with male and female. Um, and Hunet is looking for a column called sex. But if the column is called gender, it's not going to find it. So if so, you pointed out that the gender is missing. It's for one of two reasons. Either it's not in the file to begin with, or it is in the file, but Backlink is not seeing it. And that's why I opened the data file in Excel. And in this example, in the first example, I saw that the, it's not there to begin with. And that's why it's not there. And it won't be there because it's just completely missing. In the second example, it is here but backlink might not be looking in the correct place we can fix that we can say i showed you a mapping screen before you know i said the date of birth is date of birth i showed you this is this we just need to match sex to gender um okay and we're going to repeat that later when we do a poly not to, on today's call but when we do an excel import or an a polytech import we will show you how to map up the data fields i showed you the end result i showed you how smart backlink was for mapping things, we didn't do it. It was all pre-mapped. Okay. So in answer to your question, yes. One of the things I'm looking for are are there things here missing? I mentioned exa I mentioned examples like if the patient's name is sputum, there's obviously a mistake. If the sex and date of birth are missing, is that a mistake? I have to think about that. Well, was it in my data file? If the, if it's in the data file, then yes, it's a mistake. It's missing. So you have correctly pointed out sex and date of birth is missing. And the reason is that the original data file does not have this information. Okay. So it's isolate one, isolate two, isolate three. I will now click on next. And backing is running through the rest of the data file. It took seven minutes because I was talking so much. And it found 28 isolates. So it's a small sample data file we use for test purposes. Click OK. Um, and we get an important question. Backlink says, basically, I kind of understood your file to a very large degree. However, Backlink does not understand all of the codes. Uh, do you want to review the new codes? Yes, but not right now. We'll talk about that afterwards. In short, I am very happy with this conversion, except for the dates. You can even see that at the bottom of the screen, invalid date. 2014, invalid date. And even look more carefully, invalid date, it is looking for month, day, year. But these data are not month, day, year. These data are year, month, day. So basically, it found the date. Great. 
that part worked fine. But it's trying to, it's confusing the day and the month and the year. That's why Bakhtin says, I don't know what you want here. I'm a little bit confused. I, I think I'm supposed to be looking for month to year, but the date, the dates are not month to year. So do, do you want to review the new codes? No, I don't want to review them now. I'm going to review them as a separate step after. No. Um, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to make that correction. Edit format. I go to edit format. So far, we have only looked at this option called file structure. We're now going to look at this other option called codes and dates. And in the upper right hand corner of the screen, you will see that Backlink thinks that it is month, day, year, and Backlink is wrong. So I'm going to go to the drop down list. And you see there are many options year, month, day, day, month, year, just the year, a lot of options. The one that we have here is year hyphen month hyphen day. The date of birth. Well, in fact, there is no date of birth in this data file. So it does it. I can leave this empty. There are there is no date of birth. I'll put it in just to be consistent, but in fact, it doesn't matter because we do not have a date of birth. So I have now fixed the specimen date. There's one additional date I want to fix. It's not a normal date, but there's a field here called modify the list of data fields. Um, I mentioned Vitech has a specimen date. Vitech also has a test date. Uh, that's very specific for the Vitech. So testing data is not on the screen in front of you. I'm going to click on modify the list of data fields. At the bottom of the screen, you do see the bio number and the probability, but testing date, you can see now in the upper right hand corner is also month, day, year. Let me change that to year, month, day. I'm going to click on OK, click on OK, click on save, click on exit. Click on begin conversion. Okay. And now you can see the date is fine. The specimen date is fine. The testing date is fine. Any questions on that? I went through the first time, I inspected. Everything seemed to be pretty good, perfect, except it did not understand the dates. So what did I do? I went back to the configuration. I changed the dates. And now I'm going through a second time. And I see, yes, that particular issue I have now fixed. Any questions? OK, seems like no questions. That's isolate number one, isolate number two, isolate number three. Runs through the rest of the database. This time it only took 49 seconds because I talked less. OK. Very important, at the bottom of the screen, it doesn't have any complaints about the dates. So all those complaints about the dates are gone. It still says Backlink did not understand all of the codes in your file. That is correct. Okay. So now we come back to that question that I ignored earlier. Backlink says, great, I understood almost everything. Your dates are fine, your data fields are fine, but I don't understand all of the codes. Do you want to review the new codes? Yes, I do. And this is a list of everything that Vitech did not understand. The first thing I want to highlight is what you don't see here. You don't see any unrecognized organisms or antibiotics. And that's because Backlink is smart. Every Vitech in the world, you know, it depends on your version and your software updates, but more or less every Vitech in the world has exactly the same list of organisms with the same codes, the same list of antibiotics with the same codes, and we have pre-programmed that into who and into Backlink. So Backlink has trouble with your locations because every hospital has its own locations. Backlink has trouble with the specimen type because every country has its own language and specimens and lists. So, so it's normal that Backlink has trouble with the local locations and specimens, but Backlink did understand all of the organisms and all of the antibiotics. So I'm happy about that. So the first thing that you see on the screen is good, that you don't have to define the organisms and antibiotics. Those have been predefined into Vitech, in, into Backlink. What we do see here is a list of specimens and locations. I'm gonna start with the specimens, which is more important. Um, define codes at the bottom of the screen. And you can see that I do not see here blood or urine or stool because Backlink understood those automatically. 
It's only showing me the specimens it did not understand. So in the lower, I'm also watching the time. Uh, I do have a conference call with Egypt at WHO in, uh, in, at nine, at, you know, in 12 minutes. Okay, so I'm gonna, you see here it says view code dictionary. I'm gonna click on view code dictionary. And here you can see these codes are in my Vitek file. And Backlink understood them automatically. There's blood, there's urine, there's throat. Backlink did not need your assistance to understand these. But Backlink does need assistance with sputum sample. Hunet has sputum, but Hunet does not have the word sputum sample. So that happened 12 times. I want to click on define codes. And Backlink is trying to help you out. Sputum, does that mean induced sputum? No, it does not. Is it sputum for acid fast bacilli? No, it is not. Is it just normal, simple old sputum? Yes, it is. So Backlink is trying to help you match the local codes with this that is different in every hospital in the world with the standard list of HUNET codes so that people around the world can have different local codes for their systems, but they have standard HUNET codes. So sputum is equal to sputum. Catheterized urine is my second example to find codes. Backing is trying to be helpful. Is catheterized urine the same as urine non-catheterized? It's a bit of a trick question. No, it isn't. One is with the catheter, one is without the catheter. So I'm gonna change my search box and just search for the word urine. There's a better match here, urine from catheter. So that's a better match. I click OK. I can view my code dictionary. And here you can see sputum sample catheterized urine. So these specimens at the top, we did not need to help backlink. Backlink was smart enough. These two at the bottom, it understood without any assistance. I'm sorry, these two at the bottom, we, we told backlink what it is. So now it will remember for the future. Okay, so now I've defined all of my specimens. Let's go ahead and define our locations. So define codes. This only has to be done once. It encountered the word outpatient 16 times. It encountered ICU five times. So let me just start at the top, outpatient. This hospital calls it outpatient. HUNET also calls it outpatient as a department and as outpatient as a location type, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do something like five north just to highlight the differences. Five north at the top, five north is gonna stay five north. We're not going to change it. But we're gonna say that five north is medicine inpatient. In contrast, I'm gonna to go to three south. I'm gonna see that three south oops, is equal to surgery inpatient. And let's say, um, I'm just trying to find an outpatient. I don't see any outpatients. Oh, sure, cardiology. I'll, I'll call this cardiology. I'll call this medicine outpatient. Okay, so locations are a little bit different. Like your organism and specimen, I want you to match the HUNET codes. For this, it's more describing the code. Like if your code is cardiology, we're just going to call it cardiology. But I would like to describe it as medicine or, or medicine inpatient outpatient. So this stuff at the top is very local and very specific. These questions at the bottom are really just to kind of categorize it. You know, if you're, if you're at the national level at EPHI, a lot of times you really don't care about third floor, fourth floor, fifth floor, north, south, east, west. The hospital cares. The hospital wants to know where the patient came from. But the national level, you're really often just interested, is this an inpatient or an outpatient? So by defining this, this will allow us, and let me click on view dictionary. So we're just making a list here of, we're just making a list of, is this inpatient, is this outpatient? So the columns on the left are very local specific. The columns on the right are really for categorization purposes. We already discussed that with HUNET configuration. The columns on the left are very specific to the laboratory. The columns on the right are just standardized to permit easier analysis and easier standardization. I'm going to uh, exit out of that. I'm gonna exit out of that. I'm gonna continue. I'm now back at the main screen. I've, I've fixed the dates. I defined all the specimens. I defined a couple of the locations, so it's getting better, but it's not finished. Let me do con begin conversion one final time, begin conversion. Isolate number one looks perfect. Isolate number two looks perfect, and it even says here medicine. So we're adding on that descriptive information that was not in the original data file. Next. 
three cells, that's surgery. So we're, we're making backlinks smarter by putting in information that was not in the original file. Might be in the person's head. The person knows that three south is inpatient, but we were able to tell backlink that this is inpatient. Next. And this time it only took 32 seconds because I talked less. Yeah, let me just do this the fastest way. Begin conversion. Next, next, next. So if I don't talk, this only took three seconds. Okay. Backlink did not understand all of your codes. Do you want to review the new codes? Yes. And you can see it's it's perfect. It understood all the specimens, all the organisms, all the antibiotics. It understood some of the locations, but I did not finish defining all of the locations because we don't need to do this on this phone call. Any questions on that? The purpose of configuration is to find the data structure. We're now defining the codes. We're making back things smart. And now we have this new data file. And this new data file has exactly the same data. However, it's been reformatted into a language that Hunet will understand. Any questions? I'm now going to go to Excel and show you that file. So here you see this file called test EVD. That's today's day, today's time. That's the file that back then just made it, made. I'm gonna open that file up. And here you can see the WhoNet data. You can see the Vitec data in WhoNet structure. So you, you see exactly the same 28 isolates. Let me go to the bottom. There are 28 isolates here. You can see the location. You can see, here you can see the Vitec organism name, and you can see the WhoNet organism name. You can see it's gram positive, gram negative. You can see the antibiotic results, but these are now using the WhoNet codes. The WhoNet code is not ciprofloxacin, the WhoNet code is CIP. So let me compare. This is what the Vitec data looked like using the Vitec language. Lab ID, John Smith, patient ID, the Vitec data with Vitec structure. These are now the Vitec data with WhoNet structure, and it's exactly the same content, but now in a way that WhoNet will understand. Um, I just can show you that. Let me go to WhoNet, and please prepare your questions. I'm just going to do a quickie here. Uh, WhoNet test and do open data entry, open data file, test.evd. Click on view database. So here we are inside of WhoNet, looking at our Vitec data. So that's exactly, that's the only purpose of backlink. I'm going to go continue exit. I'm going to try to open up, you know, that's fine. It's, uh, let me close the Excel. Okay, and data entry, open data file. One thing I, you know, here is a reminder. You see the original data called Vitec demo. I'm going to try to open up that in Hunet. And Hunet is saying, I don't understand what this is. So everything we did on this phone call was to basically allow Hunet to read the Vitec data, but it cannot read the Vitec data in Vitec format. It had to read the Vitec in Hunet format. And that's exactly what we just did with Backlink. Okay, uh, it's close to time. There is time for a few more questions. People often get confused the first time they do backlink, the second, third time they do backlink. It's usually very, very simple because they understand the concepts and they understand the screens. So maybe, uh, can I ask you one question? Of course, yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, are we going to change the original data in the way that Hunet uh, requires? That means, for example, uh, especially the antibiotics uh, in PNM, uh, for example, Hunet abbreviates it as IMP, right? If this abbreviation yes, was not. Question. No, no. Okay. The answer to your question is that is exactly what we already did. 
so let's see. So there's one thing I didn't show you. Click. I'm going to click on edit format. Well, so first of all, begin conversion. I did show you this. So uh -oh. what you see here are the Vitek antibiotics, but using the Hunet codes. So in answer to your question, it has already done what you just asked. So imipenem is not the Vitek code. Imipenem is the Hunet code. So the question is, why was Bacting so smart? So let me click on edit format, edit format. I'm going to click on this option called codes and dates. At the bottom, you see there are four code dictionaries. I already showed you the top two. On the right-hand screen, I'm going to click on view dictionary. So this is the location dictionary that we made together. This is the specimen dictionary that we made together. I did not show you the organism dictionary or the antibiotic dictionary. Let me, you asked about the antibiotics. So the antibiotic dictionary. I told you that this existed, but I didn't show it to you. I'm showing it to you now. Also, the Vitek codes have changed over time. The Vitek used to use these one, two, three letter codes. Now Vitek uses full name codes. So let me just find me penum. So here you can see there's a middle column called local antibiotic code. So the Vitek calls it imipenem, but Hunet calls it IPM. So in answer to your question, yes, but it happened automatically because this diction, we when the same thing for organisms. I'm gonna go to the organism dictionary. So many, many years ago, so Vitek used to use six letter codes, you know, STRBOV. This was the old Unix Vitek one. So they had so their code in in Vitek 1 was STRBOV, but Hunet calls it SBO. Those are the old codes. The new codes are at the bottom. And the Vitek is strange. I don't know why they call it ST. I don't know why they call it staph. Most people would call it staphylococcus or just the letter S. But the Vitek current name is staph epidermidis. The Hunet code is SCP. So to answer your question, that it's extremely important to convert it. But Backlink did it automatically because I gave this information to Backlink many years ago. Does that answer the question? Yes. Uh, maybe I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting lost while you are discussing the Backlink configuration. Uh, you already have the configuration or you already did it now? I just did it right now. In fact, it reemphasized this. Hold on, let me just go to my inbox. Um, and let's see. And sent and ng. Um, uh, I all I am finishing my workshop with Ethiopia. I will join you in a few minutes. Okay, and and dismiss, dismiss, and send. Okay, well, uh, okay, good. And okay, and so, let me close the Excel. Don't save. And, and here. Let's just get my, my email to send it out. Okay. So, um, get back to backlink. It's Hunet. Let me close Hunet. Let me go back to backlink. Okay. I'm going to. I'm deleting everything. Everything is now deleted. So when you receive your Hunet and Backlink, this is what you will see. The configuration does not exist. Backlink has a lot of knowledge built in that we are not yet taking advantage. So basically, this entire two hours, I'm going to repeat for you in basically two minutes. I click a new format, Ethiopia, EBGI, Vitek demo, EVD, file structure, Vitek 2, and that's where it does all the magic because then it realizes all of that mapping. Let's call this EVD. Let's call this exit. Browse, uh, browse, and I choose my Vitek demo, and I say test.evd, begin conversion, and that's isolate 1, isolate 2, isolate 3. Okay. Do you want to review the new codes? Not yet. I want to go back and I want to fix the date format. Let me change this to, to year, month, day, year, month, day. Modify the list of data fields. Testing date is also year, month, day. OK, save, save, exit. Begin conversion. Isolate one. The date is now fixed. Next, next, next. OK, 
review the new codes, yes. Uh, it all, it, I didn't delete, I redid this, but it already remembers the sputum and the catheterized urine. Continue. And that's it. I've just redone this entire two hour session very quickly, emphasizing how quick and easy the Vitec is. I talked a lot, but once you're familiar with it, these steps are very simple. So, in answer to your question, no, we did not give you the configuration ahead of time, but we gave you a backlink that was very smart, that understands Vitec very well. So, as soon as I said here, as soon as I said Vitec data, that's where it automatically set up the data fields. As you can see, collection date mapping, that's where it automatically set up all of the organism dictionaries, the antibiotic dictionaries. So, so Backlink has done a lot of smart stuff behind the scenes. Okay? Okay. This file here, I guess the final thing to show you is I go to this PC, Hunet. There is a configuration file here called EVD. That's the one that I just made. And there are also these code dictionaries. Code dictionary. Oh, I only made the location one. So um, no, let me sort this alphabetically. That, should, that would be better. Codes. Right. So these are the Vitec code dictionaries. So all of that. Is, so I'm going to go to this other folder called machines. And here you see the antibiotic dictionary for Biomic and Microscan and the Phoenix and all these other systems. So Backlink gives you all this information and it leverages it once you do your own configuration. And then if I want to copy this to another computer, I just simply I just simply take this file EVD and the dictionaries and I just copy them to the other computer. We can talk about that on another call. How do you move things from one computer to another computer? You just need to know the name of the file and where the file is saved. <laughs> 